Myers Park Baptist Church. We are so excited to welcome you back to our campus for in-person worship on May 23rd. Things will be a little different when we gather again. Registration will be required to maintain safe numbers and attendance will be limited to 150 people. All attendees must give their name and age range. Once you arrive, you will be greeted on the front steps by one of our members. If you have forgotten your mask, we will certainly have extras for you. Masks are required on our campus at all times. Once you enter the seating areas, you will see that every other pew is cordoned off to maintain safe distancing. You may sit with the people in your family or your pod. Children under three do not need to register to sit in the sanctuary. There will also be child care available for children five and younger and pre-registration is required. When you join us for in-person worship, there will be no congregational singing during service. There will be limited movement throughout the sanctuary, and we are encouraging everyone to fellowship outdoors before and after worship service. To register, visit MyersParkBaptist.org. On our site, you will see a link for the upcoming services. Once you click that link, you can go ahead and register. Let us know how many guests are with you. Make sure you let us know your name and your email address so we can contact you if anything changes. Should you have trouble registering online, please call the church office and one of the staff will be happy to walk you through the process. We look forward to reuniting with you in the coming weeks. We cannot wait to see your faces in the place and we are wishing you a safe summer as we gather again.
Welcome to worship at Myers Park Baptist Church. We are a people on a journey of faith, bold in spirit and open to all. And our mission is to be an inclusive community for social justice and spirituality. We welcome you to Youth Sunday, a service led by the youth group. Our theme is around the world and we're excited to demonstrate many languages and cultures across the world. Bienvenidos a Adoración en la Iglesia de Myers Park Baptist. Somos un gente en un viaje de certeza, valiente en alma y abierto a todos. Y nuestro objetivo es para somos una comunidad incluyente para la justicia social y la espiritualidad. Le damos la bienvenida al Domingo de Juventud, un servicio guiado por el Grupo de Jóvenes. Nuestro tema es alrededor del mundo. Y estamos emocionados para mostrar muchos idiomas y culturas cruzando el mundo. Just a few brief announcements before we begin. First, it's time to regather offline. Join us next Sunday, May 23rd, Pentecost Sunday, for our in-person worship service right here in the sanctuary. Things will be a bit different, but our gratitude for your presence remains the same. Registration is required to maintain safe numbers, and masks must be worn at all times. Attendance in the sanctuary will be limited to 150 persons, and all attendees' names plus their ages are required for registration. Children under three do not need to register to sit in the sanctuary. Child care will also be available for children five years of age and younger, so be sure to pre-register. We look forward to reuniting with you in the coming week. Second, our youth ministry is working hard to collect items for the kids at our local domestic violence shelter, and we need your help. It's easy. Just check your weekly newsletter or reach out to one of our youth to get the Amazon wish list link. You choose items on the list and they're shipped directly to the church. It's that easy. Let's make this year's service according to youth a success even while we're virtual. And last but not least, if you are a youth or you have a youth in grades 6 through 12, we want to get to know you. Check out this week's weekly newsletter for upcoming events, including weekly summer hangouts at Freedom Park, where all youth are invited. Also, the registration is now open for our first annual youth homecoming on Friday, July 23rd. Again, check that weekly newsletter so that you can be one of the first to sign up. This concludes our announcements for this week. There is so much more happening in the life of the church. Make sure you're up to date on the happenings in person and virtual by visiting our website, following us on social media, and ensuring you're subscribed to our weekly emails with more information. Now, let's continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. To people of all shapes, sizes, races, ethnicities, sexualities, and gender identities, welcome. If you're a new guest, we want to get to know you. Text the word guest to the number 474747, and a member of our staff will contact you. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy our Around the World service.
Hello, my name is Megan Merritt and I'm a senior at Myers Park High School this year. Today, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on my experiences at Myers Park Baptist Church over the years and what the people, events, and traditions I've been lucky enough to experience and learn at church have meant to me. I've been coming to this church since I was born. I began my journey with church being dedicated, walking down the aisle carried by Dr. Shoemaker. When I was in preschool, I remember sitting on the two carpets with the other children at the front of the sanctuary. I love to watch the choir walk into service and watch everyone participating. It's a privilege to be able to look back and realize how lucky I was to grow up here. After much reflection and while trying to focus on what I wish to speak about today, I realized that the thing I find most unique about Myers Park Baptist Church is I've had the ability to be personally involved in church at every age. In a lot of cases, children simply observe adults to learn about something, like a tradition or part of service, without having the chance to participate themselves. But in my experiences at this church, it has always been that no matter what the event, there is always a chance for children to feel connected to and understand what was happening in service. This has provided me an understanding of varying aspects of the church and has helped me to develop a deep faith. When I was in elementary school, my involvement came in the form of what was then referred to as God's Garden. Each week, I'd walk up the stairs with the grapevine decorations and look at the wooden board to see which rotation my grade would be attending that day. The different areas were generally art, drama, cinema, cooking, and sometimes games. As most of us can probably admit, I generally hope for cinema for the popcorn. Each rotation had an activity that pertained to a Bible story we were learning about in a given month. This helped us to not only learn the Bible overall, but these stories were chosen to help us understand what the adults were talking about and preaching about in what I called Big Church. We started each Sunday in what we called Temple. Here we learned about the liturgical calendar, what the different colors draped on the altar really meant, how to say the Lord's Prayer, and how to participate in activities like Communion. But most importantly for me, we had a small altar on which we'd light candles as a way of learning what the role of an acolyte meant in service. Now, or at least pre-pandemic, acolyting has been one of the ways I'm most involved in church. I've been responsible for lighting many candles and accidentally putting a few out. I've served as an acolyte since the summer leading up to sixth grade and started serving as an acolyte captain when I reached ninth grade. In addition to God's Garden, when I was in the younger grades, I also loved participating in the Christmas pageant each December and anticipating which speaking role I'd finally receive in fifth grade. I ended up picking one of the angels and even got to speak from the pulpit, but that was much taller than I had originally believed. As I graduated from God's Garden and moved into the youth department, I met new people and found new ways to be involved at church. I was most involved in Sunday morning gatherings. During sixth grade, I enjoyed attending a middle school retreat as well as Canuga, where we woke up to a frozen lake. In eighth grade, I joined the baptism class and decided to join the church. This experience was probably one of the most important parts of my church experience, and I learned a great deal about my faith. I'd also like to take a moment to thank Joan Hope, who is my mentor during this class and this process. As I've gotten older and into high school, my life has gotten a great deal busier, and I have not been able to attend as many youth group events as I may have liked. Instead, my main involvement at church has been with choir and music. This has been an incredibly important aspect of my life since I was quite young. At church, I finally got to join my older brother Ryan in the children's choirs when I was in kindergarten. I've always looked up to my brother a great deal, but never more than when it comes to music and singing. And so joining the choir meant I finally got to do something just like him. In the younger choirs, we learned to sing songs and perform in church for the first times, as well as how to play different orphan instruments. As I got older and I joined the chapel choir, we got to sing different songs and began to learn how to sing in different parts. I participate whenever we sing in church, as well as some of my favorite occasions, like lessons and carols at Christmas. These occasions were always fun, but important to me in any, many other ways. I'm a very shy person, and never more so than when I have to sing in front of other people. Ironically, even more so in front of people I know quite well. Singing in church and in choir has allowed me to be less shy about talking and performing in front of other people, through different experiences like solos. Youth choirs also provide me many other opportunities beyond singing, like a sense of community and a very fun trip to Atlanta, as well as events like caroling at Christmas, which have all been very fun and memorable. A few years ago and before the pandemic, I also started helping out on Wednesday nights with the choirs for the younger children. This has been a wonderful experience for me as I've enjoyed watching and helping these kids love and grow the choirs that I was a part of when I was younger, as well as being involved with a wider range of age groups at the church. Overall, these experiences with the church, and especially in the choirs, have helped me to be ready to take the next steps in my life and allow me to know that I always have a church and congregation of people to come back to. 
I also want to thank everyone who's been involved in any of these experiences and times that I mentioned, but especially Charlotte Judge, Fran Morrison, and Deb Steiner, who have all influenced my love and involvement in choir and church. I'm excited to move forward into the next chapter of my life with this church by my side. When I look back at the last 18 years of my life, there are two things that come to mind. My family and Myers Park Baptist Church. As I move toward the next 18 years of my life, the next four of which I will spend in the Honors College at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, there is a question for which I will continue to seek an answer. What does it mean to be educated? How might God help you achieve this aim? Every second of the day is a learning opportunity. Simply walking across the street offers countless lessons, namely, look both ways before crossing. The exercise offers a shift in perspective, an awareness of the direction from which others come. Whether by my family or by my childhood minister, Dr. Shoemaker, I am perpetually educated inside and outside of the global classroom. This church is the ultimate classroom, our congregation, loyal apprentices, and God, our greatest teacher. Thanks to my family, I have the courage to love unconditionally. Thanks to Dr. Shoemaker, I have many unanswered questions about my faith. And thanks to God, the greatest lesson I have learned is that education is progress in lieu of perfection. In my eyes, education is simply the imposition of questions on a carefully worded narrative of our past, present, and future. Every day after school, my mom would and still probes me, Honey, what did you learn today? That is, until I learn to ask myself this question. I do not believe in prescriptive education. Rather, that each day we face the same question. What did you learn today? In second grade, we celebrated Black History Month with a wax museum. Up and down the halls, we honored pioneers of racial equality from Harriet Tubman to Ella Fitzgerald. I presented as Katherine Dunham, an African-American dancer, educator, anthropologist, philosopher, and social activist. Basically, she ought to have been the chair of deacons here at Myers Park Baptist. I often think about how she and others like her would have struggled to find their place in a pale pink world meant to only elongate the bodies of those whose skin resembled a similar rosy hue. To Dunham, to be educated was to do better for her community. A decade later, I still put myself in Catherine Dunham's shoes, realizing education as a legacy. With the oils from our fingertips forever ingrained in these pews and our prayers immortalized in this sanctuary, I've come to realize that this church is our legacy. A short while ago, Washington Post The Lily held an essay contest for high school students, girls and women, in which their prompt was, Imagine it's 2030 a decade from now. Write a letter to your future self. Instead, I'd like to address the Myers Park Baptist Church congregation in 2031. Dear 2031 Myers Park Baptist Church, never stop searching for what it is you seek. The search for a learning environment in which knowledge is acquired in a meaningful capacity through tools of experience and service is seemingly eternal. I hope your search through God has produced some results. I trust your standing on the broad shoulders of your faith, serving the community around you. Keep asking yourself who is teaching you, what it is you're learning, when you'll find your people, where life will take you next, why you are the way that you are, and how you know what you know. If not for the service of others, why does it all matter? Thoughtfully, Catherine Haney, signed May 9th, 2021. To be educated is to know better and thereafter do better. History is our teacher, the present, our objective, and the future, our final exam. So, I suppose the question, what does it mean to be educated, is really just a grown-up rendition of the question my mom asked me every day all those years ago, honey, what did you learn today? As I continue to learn and grow, I hope that through God and her beautiful children, I can be part of a new global attitude an optimistic ringing in our ears that possibilities are limitless, discoveries infinite, and God benevolent. This is a reading from Acts. 
When the day of the Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be the tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hear them in our native language? For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Allow me to share just a few words as a charge to our current youth ministry. In many ways, the last year and few months have been seen as a time of division, disconnection, and disillusion. The divisions by political and belief or affiliation have become much clearer for many of us. The disconnections from social distancing and quarantining have been difficult. And the disillusion of a seemingly never-ending virus that's still spreading and still haunting us today. This context is not unlike the context of the disciples in Acts chapter 2. After witnessing Jesus choose the least desirable people, after witnessing Jesus challenge oppressive systems and change lives and charge them with doing even more than he did, Jesus departed. And they too saw more clearly the political divisions of their day, They too felt disconnected from one another without Jesus as their glue. They too felt disillusioned to see all the good that Jesus did and their world still full of evil haunting them. But Jesus promised there would be a Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit would lead them to connect in new ways. Who better to exemplify the presence of the Holy Spirit than by our very own youth ministry? That's right, I believe that these youth embody the Holy Spirit found in Acts 2, just as the Holy Spirit uh, addressed the division, disconnection, and disillusion, our youth do so as well. You may be wondering, how so? Allow me to briefly tell you as a way to remind the adults and our youth how special they really are. First, the Holy Spirit functions no matter who you are, And the youth embrace that as well. In the text, the Holy Spirit arrives as the author writes, and as a mighty rushing wind filled the entire house where the disciples were gathered. The author writes that they all were filled with the Holy Spirit. Not some, not a few, but all. The Holy Spirit didn't have time to discriminate and divide, and thankfully neither do our youth. Let me be clear, in general, our world does a terrible job of taking people as they are, as the Creator fashioned them to be. But if anyone operates closer to the Holy Spirit's acceptance of all people as worthy, it is our youth. While our adults are still misgendering and dead naming and teaching colorblindness, youth are more likely and the most likely to ask for your pronouns, to affirm your identities, and acknowledge the racial inequities present in our society. That's how they came up with this theme around the world for our Youth Sunday. Because they know the world is made up of more than their divided individual parts. Because they know God is bigger than the things that divide us, this church, this community, and this nation. I thank God for our youth for exemplifying the Holy Spirit by respecting and affirming people as they are, as God made them. I thank God for our youth recognizing that there are bigger fish to fry and other work that must be done. Secondly, The Holy Spirit operates around the world, and youth have that same capability through technology. The author writes about this dramatic introduction of the Holy Spirit, and some believe it was a one-time, one-place event. However, I believe this second wind of God was not restricted by place, and the Holy Spirit reaches all corners of the earth. 
And if anyone knows how to reach all corners of the earth, everyone in society, it is our youth. While adults are still siloing off to themselves and arguing over inclusivity, our youth are expanding and connecting around the world. While adults are whining about movies that may have a subtitle, on TikTok, you are the odd person out if you don't use captions. I love verse 8 in the text where someone questions, how are they able to understand one another's language? A little further down, another person makes fun of the disciples for speaking different languages. This serves to remind me that while adults are looking confused and flustered and making fun of other people for the ways that they connect, like people in the text, mocking instead of listening and learning, our youth are creating language before our very eyes and ears. From the tech language of VR and AR and AI to the clarifying language of cisgender, non-binary, and they slash them, And some adults are indeed mocking instead of listening and learning, wondering why you, unlike youth, get scammed so easily, often get computer viruses, and don't know how to do much on your own phone without the youth. While adults often use language to further disconnect us from one another, our youth have created and used language just like the Holy Spirit to connect with more people around the world. Whether it's through tech like social media, online translations, or even accessibility tools, or it's by being open to learning and actively trying to connect with the marginalized, I thank God for our youth. And last but not least, the Holy Spirit continually moves us forward and the youth push us forward. Although we call the text the Book of Acts, the title from since around the second century is the Acts of the Apostles. In other words, the entire book serves to report what the apostles were up to after Pentecost, after the Holy Spirit's arrival. Focusing primarily on the birth of the church or the conversion of Gentiles and establishing churches around the world. This was all due to the influence of the Holy Spirit. Thus, in many ways, it is the Holy Spirit that pushed our faith forward and took the gospel message beyond its Jewish roots. That being said, I believe that today the church can still move forward, but not without the push from our youth. If we're honest, it's easy to feel disillusioned and hopeless, but hopefully... Seeing our youth today and any day will replace your disillusion with delight, your cynicism with satisfaction, and replace your bleak outlook with blissful hope. Know that like the Holy Spirit, this youth ministry is already pushing me forward, can push this church forward, and can push our world ever forward. How sad it would have been for the disciples to experience the Holy Spirit one time and think, well, that was very nice. Instead, we have a Holy Spirit that continually pushes us forward. And if we take the time to listen, we'll recognize that our youth continually push us forward. Let me close on this. If you recognize that you're having an issue with me making a comparison between our youth and the Holy Spirit or feel that it somehow denigrates the Holy Spirit to compare it to youth, I invite you to check yourself and re-examine how you view our youth because it's showing how little you think of our youth. While you wrestle with that, as for myself and this youth ministry, we have work to do. And I'm charging you to join in with us in reuniting, reconnecting, and revitalizing. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Thank you, seniors and youth, for allowing me to share this moment with you today. Many of you may not know that I started volunteering with our youth group back in 2013. And it had only been a few Sundays when Chrissy asked me if I wanted to be a chaperone at Canuga. Unsure of what that was, I jumped at the opportunity to spend the weekend in the mountains. So I said yes. 
I remember loading the bus in the front of the church and a couple of youth coming up to me and asking me, oh, you're going to Canuga? I thought to myself, what have I gotten myself into? But now I am thankful that I made that trip. Saturdays at Canugas always include free time to play basketball, hang in the dorms, or simply take a nap. On my very first experience, I was asked to go hiking with a group of youth. We met in front of Perry Pavilion to embark on our journey. There were six youth and three chaperones. We started out walking and we were laughing and joking, talking about the things in the woods and the animal tracks that we saw. But slowly I began to realize that our hike was getting more difficult. We were navigating through brush and heavy foliage that didn't seem to fit where we were at. We looked around at each other and kind of asked, who knows where we're going? Well, no one. We were lost. We had all been expecting the others to lead and we were lost. We frantically began searching for clues, retracing our steps, trying to go back to figure out where we were until one profound youth said, we should just keep going forward. And so we did. Such a simple idea helped get us back to the trailhead. We figured out where we were and we continued to laugh and joke, tell stories as we hiked back to camp. It was so much fun that the youth began to tell stories of that first hike. It became a tradition at Canuga for Allen Saturday's hikes. Looking back on that experience, it has modeled so much of what my time at Myers Park Baptist Church has been. Our youth group has always been a welcoming and affirming space. And so the first thing that I learned was that sometimes you just have to say yes. You have to be willing to go out there and journey in a place that may seem unknown that may seem foreign. For our seniors, you are getting ready to take that step. For our youth, you take that step every single time you show up. Uncertain about what comes and what is to happen, but I'm so glad that you're there. The second thing that it taught me was that it's not always about the journey, but the people you are with. I'm so glad to have been on this journey here at Myers Park Baptist Church with our youth group and the youth that have been over the years. It has helped shape me, it has helped grow me, and I hope that my experiences have helped shape and grow the youth of our church. Our seniors, as you go out in this journey, make sure you surround yourself with the good people, with the people that will pour into you, that will cover you and protect you. This is part of your work that you are able to do. Another thing I learned that sometimes when life gets hard, it can be easy to look back. What if, what could, how should? But the simple answer, just move forward. Just keep doing the good work. Youth, as we embark on this new journey that Tara will lead us on, we will keep doing good work. We will keep showing up every Sunday. We will keep going on trips. We will keep inviting others to be a part of our community. Moving forward is how our community grows. It is how we honor what is in our past and how we continue to move our church forward. Lastly, the thing that I'm reminded most on that trip is that once we got back on our path, we were so happy. We were so excited. In this last year, we have been off the path. We have been uncertain about when and how and what, but I know for sure that our community, that our youth group, when we come back together, we will celebrate together. To celebrate good things in our life, I'm so excited when we get back together that we will continue what we have built. We will continue loving and embracing and celebrating others. My time here at Myers Park Baptist Church has been a meaningful time in my life. I've celebrated milestones, I've laughed, I've cried, we've danced in the sanctuary. We stayed out all night long. We've had a really good time. Our church and our youth community have enriched my life and I'm so thankful for what Myers Park Baptist Church has meant to me and my family. So in closing, as we think about the world around us and our youth share their stories and experiences, 
Our seniors are preparing to embark on a new journey. I'm so excited for you all. And so in true Allen fashion, I'll close with Dr. Seuss. So congratulations are in order. Today is our day. We are off to great places. We're off and away. Amen. Have you ever had extra money lying around your house that you need to get rid of? You know what? I have. Well, well we, we have, have the solution. solution. Donate your money to the church to show your support. Your support will help our church grow and prosper in beautiful ways. There are three ways to give. Text give MPBC to 77977. Click Give in the top left corner of the website, or mail a check to our church office. Thank you for supporting our church. Really appreciate it. God. We thank you for being in our lives. We thank you for being there for us through thick and thin. We also want to thank you for letting us be a part of your family and bringing us all together. We ask that the people who are sick become healthy. We pray that everyone gets the help they need. 
We pray that the people around the world are safe. We pray for the youth at our church and others. God, guide us to do good in the world. Amen. Did you know that in just about all languages we say I'm in the same? Think about this as we end our service. Even though we don't all look the same or sound the same, God is still with us the same. You are blessed. Amen.